The age-old wisdom is that practice makes perfect, and this is precisely what researchers are hoping to ensure for those seeking to decommission nuclear power plants by offering them the chance to try things out under simulation. Our challenger tells us what this means. This is Unit 1 of the Kodi nuclear power plant in Busan. It's been suspended since 2017. The nuclear fuel rods inside will one day need to be taken out, but that requires a special tool. South Korean researchers have developed a type of simulator to help people learn how to dismantle nuclear power plants. The worker can alter the position and shape of the cut and change the intensity of the laser according to the thickness of the wall. Data on laser properties, wall thickness and dimensions were taken into account during the simulator's development. Researchers also replicated the underwater environment inside the reactor and used the various data during the development stage. The simulator helps operators practice cutting methods that generate minimal secondary waste and even trains people on how to efficiently load cutting waste into containers. Since it's impossible to know how much laser power is needed or how to set the speed, this simulator helps us predict how to work while controlling the output to some extent. The global nuclear power plant decommissioning market is expected to reach around 150 billion U.S. dollars by the year 2050. It is also expected to expand further as there are over 200 nuclear power plants that have been permanently shut down worldwide and almost 300 that have been in operation for more than 30 years and are considered to be old. There are, however, only four countries, the United States, Japan, Germany and Switzerland, with experience in decommissioning nuclear power plants, and all these countries have dismantled them in the traditional way, by sending workers into the reactor. South Korean researchers hope to become competitive in the global nuclear power plant dismantling market with a newly developed simulator. Jong Eun-ju, Arirang News.